Hello, my squishies. It's Friday. It's the first Friday of the month. Uh, you know what time it is. It is felting time. So I'm going to give us a couple of seconds for everybody to log in and join on because we do these live and then they stay up afterwards. So if somebody in the chat could say that they can hear me and see me, that would be great. Um, but while that's happening and people are sort of filtering in, I'm going to give you a quick guide to needle felting if you've never felted before. So you've got your box full of squishy goodness. So in that box, you've got your felting mat. So this is the mat that we're going to use to protect our surfaces and make needle felting a lot easier. So always felt onto this mat, very important. We've also got, <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting distracted already. This is how this evening is gonna go. It's gonna be wonderful, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna ramble nonsense. And at the end of it, we're gonna get a picture. But so <laughs> we've got our mat. Oh, some people are popping in and I sound good. Thank you. Hello all. Say hello in the chat uh, if you, when you're in. <laughs> yeah, right. Back on topic. We can do this. <laughs> so we've got your felting mat. We've got, this is our fibre. So this is what we're going to felt onto. It's called pre-felt. This is Shetland pre-felt that we're working with today. And you can see you've got the outline of what we're drawing on it as well. Next step, we have our needles. So these are very sharp. The plasters on my hand have nothing to do with these needles, I promise. But please try not to stab yourself with them. <laughs> um, they're very sharp and they can break. Hello, Gatty. They can break. If they do break, dispose of them safely. Make sure you get the broken bit and the end as well. Oh, and welcome to your first live stream. Um, yeah, but uh, you can hold these like this. I like to hold them just like this. I tend to hold sort of a couple at a time, but in your kit, you've also got this, which makes it a little bit easier. So this is a needle holder and the way this works, I'll do this a couple of times. So you pull the wee peg out of there. There's a wee groove, pop the needle into the groove with the hook. <laughs> with the, sorry, I'm reading comments as well as talking at the same time. And if you're watching this after the fact, you won't be able to see the comments. So you think I'll just talk, I'm just talking to myself. Ah, brilliant to hear your dialogue lives. I am an idiot. Um, listen along and felt along later. Yes, back on topic. We can do this. Um, so I've popped the needle in the groove there. And then the thin end just goes back into the holder. Nice and easy. I'll do that one more time. So you've got your needle there. You pull that out of the holder, look for the wee groove that's running along it, sit your needle into the groove, and then pop the thin end of the peg back in there. And then you're ready to stab away. And this is all we're doing. We're just gonna be doing a wee stabbing motion. Try not to bend. So you can stab at an angle, you can stab straight, but try not to bend it because that's when you're more likely to break it. But I don't tend to use this. It just makes it a lot easier for a lot of people. But I like the freedom of being able to switch between different needles at a time. Always count your needles in and out at the beginning of each project. Don't want a lost needle anywhere. Okay, so we've got the foam, the pre-felt, we've got our stabby stabby needles. The last, nope, the second last. Alorona! The colours are beautiful this month, aren't they? I'm. Not that I'm biased, but purple and green are my favourite colour, so yes. Um, talking of favourite colours, this is the fibre we're going to be working with. So it's all British fibre. It's mostly Shetland in here. I think we've got a little bit of Cheviot as well. But it's mostly Shetland fibre. And this is what we use to make our colour. So to work with this, there's a couple of handy hints. So this has come off the sheep it's been washed and brushed and dyed so it's just loosely held together in this what's called a roving and when you're wanting to get it apart you can just have your hands nice and far apart and gently pull and you'll see this tiny amount comes out which as i apologize in advance i will say tiny minuscule many times because the secret of needle felting is less is more 
So you want to pull out just little bits at a time generally. But if you have your hands too close together, you won't be able to pull it apart because you're fighting against the same hair and we don't want to break it, we just want to gently pull it. So you want to have your hands nice and far apart so it can move and you can pull out just a fibre's length. And if there's any twist in it, you won't be able to pull it out either. Because the twist is what holds the yarn together. And so essentially, as soon as you start twisting it, this is a big massive piece of yarn now, but that stops it from coming apart as well. So make sure it's not twisted, get your hands nice and far apart, and then you can just gently, she says, <laughs> gently pull and get little bits out. Excellent. And then the last thing in our kit is the dowel that we can use to hang it with. And I now know that everybody has a dowel because I may have forgotten to put one in one of your kits. But panic was averted. Um, but so this dowel, you don't have to use a dowel. You can use a frame. If you've got a glass frame, you can leave the dowel out and just frame it up. You can, pardon me, I've got my coffee sitting there. I'm going to have a sip in a second. Um, yeah, you can just frame it or you can get an embroidery hoop, put it in an embroidery hoop. The world is your mollusk. But I will show you briefly how to use the dowel if you want to use the dowel. Now I'm not going to use the dowel in this because reasons. <laughs> but the easiest way, there is a few different ways to attach the dowel. You can, after the fact, sew it on. So just get a bit of yarn, sew that round the dowel, including it in the picture. But what's quite fun is if you lift up and lay little sections of the blue sky down, you can either do it, you can do it the whole way across, you can just do little sections, pop your dowel in and then fold it over but so if we do this before we start felting the big picture, it's going to be incorporated in. And then I'm just going to stab it down a few times just to show you. Obviously you would do this a lot more, but that's it essentially secured on there. I'll show you one. Nope, I can't show you one. <laughs> They're all out in the shop. That's too far for me to run. But yeah, so you can... And as we're felting, these will felt in nice and securely. So that's one option. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to ignore it completely because I'm a rebel without a cause. And I'm just going to felt it without the dowel for today. Okay, one sip of fake coffee. And then we are ready to go. Oh, one more very, very, very important uh, thing. If I'm going too fast, you can slow the speed down somewhere there. You can pause me, fast forward, rewind. And as my parents have discovered, I love you, mum and dad, you can mute me. So you don't have to listen to my ramblings. And I love telling people that in the shop that my parents mute me. They're wonderful. <laughs> but So let's start felting. So we're going to felt lightly first to begin with and then go back in over it. So I'm going to work quite fast. We're going to start from the back and work our way forward. So I'm taking this beautiful sky blue that we've got lots of and I'm just going to spread this out and lay it in this top section up there. Now this is quite fast, we, I'm definitely going to go back over it because I'll have missed bits but I like to, like when you're painting you want to fill in the whole area, colour block in the whole area so that you kind of know how it's looking and especially if we don't felt it in too well, or too, too well, that's bad English, if we don't felt it in too much just now we can do something magical because felting is magical we can pick it up and move it and smoosh it around and change its position. So unlike paint, it's a lot easier to, to change it. Oh, I haven't, I haven't shown you the finished picture. Should I show you the finished picture or should I keep it as a surprise? 
Thanks, Mum. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the finished picture. Although, if you've got... Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. We're doing Heather Hills with a lovely stream in it. So at the moment, we're just working on the this guy. But yes, this is... this. Well, it's probably going to look different because I always change it up on the night. But... So we've popped in our blue there. And then I'm going to take some of this. So this isn't tops. So the, these ones are tops of roving. This one's called slivers because it's prepared slightly differently. It's not quite as smooth. It's a little bit more rustic, um, but it makes great cloud textures. And later on, we'll find water textures as well. So I'm going to take some of this and just spread it out to give the sky just a little bit. You can pop in a few clouds in places just to give it a little bit of movement. And like I say, if you don't like the positioning, you can go back later, if I'm going too high up, and pop it in a different place. There we go. So we've got a little bit of sky. Wasn't that quick and easy? Yes. As you can see, it's still really lightly felted down, so don't worry. Now we're going to work in the hills. And with the hills, the further back they are, the lighter we want them to be. And then it's going to get darker as we get closer. So I'm going to start with this green, which my lovely assistant Liz, who doesn't listen to these so I can talk about her, um, calls sludge green. And she does not like this colour at all. I love this pale coloured green. But each to their own. I'm just going to pop a little bit, not too much, saving some for going over it later because we're going to build up layers on the hills. So the more layers you add, the more blended it looks and yeah. Going down from the light, I keep, I've got to call it sludge green. It's not sludge green, it's beautiful light olive but now I'm going to take the definite orange green and lay that at the bottom. So we've got this hill here that we're dealing with. Going from the lighter green down to this olive green. And you can see how I can grab these tiny, tiny little bits and just lay them over and it kind of blends the colour between the two. And we'll add a few more layers and it'll blend even more and give you sort of little pockets of shadow and light and things like that. We might, we're going to put some darker colours over the top as well, but very, very sparingly. And not yet. But there we go. That already, start, I mean, from where I'm sitting, doesn't always show up properly on camera, is already starting to look like a mountain fading into the distance. And that makes me very happy. So we've got this here. I'm going to take the tiniest, tiniest bit of this dark green and lay it right along the edge. This is just going to give us a tiny, it's even, we're probably going to cover it up a lot um, before we finish this, but this is just going to give us a tiny bit of definition between that hill and this one that's coming into the right there. You see what I mean when I say it, like tiny, tiny bits and just fade that up there. Oh, and don't worry, this is going to look like a mess for a good wee while. This is part of the process, everybody's does. And then suddenly it will all come together and you'll be like, no way, I did the thing. <laughs> right, now we're going to start on this hill here, which is going to fade from this green down to sort of this green and this green. So starting, we might even pop a little bit of the sludge green in at the top as well to give it some highlights. Again, starting building up layers. It's so fun being able to just plonk it and see how it looks and see where you want it to go without even starting to stab. So here we're going to go sort of quite dark down here. Not dark dark, but definitely 
pressure because the water because we're putting a wee <laughs> what's the word for that stream kind of thing? Oh, stream river the river is gonna make the grasses around around it more vibrant because they've got more water and they're a little bit more excitable and again I'm starting to fade up there by putting tiny layers so you can see how tiny that layer I just put down was by kind of spreading it out to create shadows and highlights I'm going to take some of this darkest green and pop it a little bit closer there just building up layers of colour and then to the lighter on top excellent oh remind me because I forgot last time remind me at the end to explain what I do with the edges I knew I'd forgotten something I was sitting here going what have I forgotten while well, I was trying frantically to think and it was the edging so go over the edges just now and we will deal with that at the end you see what I'm doing there we go okay so I'm going to quickly stab in this hill in the foreground and again don't worry if you've got gaps because we are going to be going over with more fibre before we go much further well before we're finished okay so we've got that starting to hmm I think I want to put a little bit like this a little bit lower to fade it a little bit better there we go oh that's better but play around so your landscape's going to look different from mine it's going to be unique it's going to be yours this is just me playing we're just playing for the evening it's fine playing drinking fake coffee and not stabbing my fingers this was not needle felting this is entirely unrelated I'm just apparently allergic to summer um, so we're now going to go here and this one is going to be the darker one again so I'm going to start off with the dark the dark green there and the lighter green So again this is more foreground it's slightly lusher we might even put some bushes and things in it now don't be afraid to use a little bit of the lighter colors just spreading them over the top because there will in nature be sort of lighter and darker patches There we go. I'm going to just stab that down. Now again, don't worry about your fuzzy edges and things just now. Like there's big gaps there and I don't care. We'll be going back over them later. This is just colour blocking in just now. Making, sort of getting it all in, in our heads. <laughs> Out of our heads, onto the, this isn't paper, onto the pre-felt. Okay. Now we're going to put some rocks in along the edge of the stream. Oh, I'm hiccuping a lot. Oh dear. We've got the grey and the black here to make the rocks. So I'm going to do an under undercoat. <laughs> oh no! I'm reading comments now. Yep, the first time you stab yourself, it's like oh. You learn. I've learnt. I was about to say I've learned not to stab myself, but you know in five minutes I'm going to stab myself. It's not as bad. It gets the adrenaline going. That's the... Oh, but I am excited to see your cow. Your coo. Oh, and I have I know we may have named the cow... Uh, we did the Highland cow. We may have named the Highland cow during the live stream last time we did when we did them. But it has been renamed and it's an amazing name and I'm officially it's lovely so the highland cow is now called toffee and because a customer 
came in. She was wonderful. And she was saying that she was like, oh, I love the toffee there. And I'm like, the, the toffee there? There's no toffee on the wall, but I'll have some toffee if you've got some. Um, and then she explained that Highland cows in her family are called toffees because their her grandfather, father, used to have a tin with a Highland cow on it that the, co the, the toffees were kept in. So now my Highland cow, she's called a toffee. Okay, so we've done a very basic dark brown swoop around the edges and I'm going to start putting in little lumps so I'm taking the grey this time and smooshing it between my fingers into a little funnily enough a little rock shape little pebble and then I'm going to add them in at random now again these are not going to be well defined they're going to be quite random don't worry we can add, we're going to be layering up as well. Don't try and... <laughs> yes. Um, when I... <laughs> Reading a comment again. When I stab myself on camera, I have to be very careful about how I react. And, oh no, it seems, <laughs> seems to pop up a lot. We've got our little, these pebbles are looking very regular. I don't want regular pebbles, but we'll work on them. I think I need a bit more grey, it's too much. Yes, this is why I enjoy flat felting a lot more than I enjoy 3D felting. Because with flat felting, this hand, oh, look at it, it's not even there. I tend to hold the edge of my mat. If I, I say I tend to. You guys can see what I do. Um, hopefully I tend to hold the edge of my mat. I'm going to do it now for the rest of the day. <laughs> Rather than putting my fingers near where I can stab myself. Let's be honest. Okay. Very loosely blocked in rocks there. Again, we're going to go back over them and make them more cohesive. I just want to get the colours in just now. This side, because I'm imagining... No, I'm going to put rocks on this side as well. I'm going to line the edge there. I'm going to swoop that round. And you kind of want it to go narrow to wider. I am now just waiting for myself to stab my finger. The dark one and then we're gonna put the color the colors nope this is not a color gray is not a color I'm gonna put the gray on top and you don't have to do little pebbles you can just do vague shapes sort of vague light and dark area oh I'm going squinty again light and dark areas Again, we're going to work on this later and you'll see little bits like here. The grass doesn't quite go up to the edge, but we're going to play with that and fill that in. But now the exciting bit, the water. So we've got two colours of blue, we've got the sky blue and we've also got this lovely sort of slightly deeper blue. And what I'm going to do is start with the deeper blue, the sort of mm, dustier, and put a undercoat of that over the whole water where your river's going to be. And that'll give it depth and a bit of life when we add the lighter blue on top. Oh! I'm just following that curve. If you want to do, I should have said this before, if you want to do a different shape river, if you have a specific river that you love, feel free. There we go. 
and I'm following, letting the yarn follow the direction. So you might have noticed that I've been laying the yarn down sort of very horizontally for the landscape and then in smooshy bits for around there. And, and this time I'm making the, riv the yarn follow the river. So it gives it that little bit of, it's quite, it can be quite subtle, but it just gives it that little bit of movement and difference. Now I'm going to grab some of the lighter blue and pop that. So I'm going to aim vaguely for the lighter blue to be more around the edges than in the center, because it's more likely to be The centre is likely to be deeper than the edges. So it will be a darker colour. But already just adding that on gives it that little bit of... So I, I just stopped halfway through a sentence there. And just got, I got distracted with felting. It's not my fault. I might finish that sentence later, I might not. Who knows? <laughs> there we go. So I've taken that right up to oh the dear. Taking that right up to the edge. Okay, we've got a couple more bits to fill in. And then we're gonna be on to the heather. So we need some movement and some rocks in the centre of the water as well. And to do these, let's bring that. Uh, can you see that up there? So I'm going to start off with the dark brown. I'm going to place, smoosh it up, place it down. Okay. Then I'm going to take the grey and again smoosh it down. And this time we're going to place it just a little bit forward so it's roughly the same size but slightly offset so you've got a dark shadow underneath and the light gray on top okay so that's part one part two around each one we're going to take the white fluffy cheviots cheviots livers and so you're imagining as the water's hitting it you're going to get little bubbles around there and going around the side. So I'm going to take the tiny, tiny bit and just have them going there. So it's hitting the rock and then going, ah, sticking to my plaster. <laughs> and then going around that side. And you can even have a little trail going around sort of that side there. And look at that. That is so easy, but so effective. Right, so we're going to put in a few more of them. So pop them. So with the rocks, <laughs> uh, with the rocks, you can see, normally I say you have like the bigger ones at the front and the smaller ones going behind, going further away. But rocks and rivers can be any size. And so there's no real right or wrong with how big or small your rocks are. I'm gonna place, I think, a few littler ones around here, because it looks like the stream's sort of widening out there. So again, I'm taking the dark brown to start, stabbing that in there, going with the same amount of gray. And then offsetting that just slightly, so you've got dark shadow and then the grey on top and then taking the whoop taking the cheviots tiny tiny amount might be a bit much there we go and then laying that so the bubbles are hitting the front and then getting drawn round the sides Now we are going to put some sort of random, oh, those rocks, now that I've put the water in, those rocks make so much more sense already. I love it. 
So I get, I get very excited. I don't think this isn't my skill. This is just, this is just, it's fun. It's fun, basically. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Getting very distracted and now slightly embarrassed. Luckily, you can't see my face and see how bright pink I've gone. Okay, so I'm going to pop in. Where am I? I like to have uneven numbers, so odd numbers. I try not to have even numbers. Um, so I'm going to do, I think I want to do a wee one. Let's make a wee one back there. But yeah, you can pop your rocks in. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad you're having fun, but you're not even felting. You're just listening to my insane ramblings. <laughs> but you will be felting soon. And I'm excited to see it. I'm also excited to see your cow. So I've got my little rock back there. And again, I'm going to have the bubbles so where the water is hitting it. The bubbles are going to... Bubbles! going to hit it there and then come round. They don't have to do big every time you can have because the water will be different in different patches. Is three enough? No I'm going to do five I think but I reserve the right especially just now and this is why we're only felting in gently that if it's in the wrong place or if you want to move it you can I don't want to do it because I like this placement but you can just pull it off and then move it about. The joy of felting. <laughs> Getting laughed at in the comments here. <laughs> and for once it's not my parents, although I suspect they've either muted me so they don't have to listen to my ramblings or <laughs> they're just flat out ignoring me now. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, serious, being serious. Not being serious. <laughs> Not saying that live on stream. This is family friendly. There we go. So we're going to pop that round there. Oh, you're actually making me cry. <laughs> there we go. Gonna let that trail down a little bit more there and have that coming out there. I could literally spend hours putting these. Ah, so now my parents talk. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> crying from laughing. Fine. <laughs> oh no, they don't talk. I've got this the uh, this you can talk. I like it when you talk. Okay, one, one more rock and then we're done. <laughs> okay, I will, I, I will keep trying to be funny. Thank you. <laughs> Do I want to put that there? Let's have a look. Or do I want it to be there or there? Oh, I think there. Or a couple of small ones. Let's do a couple of small ones. Just little, little pebbles. I feel like I should be serious now for five seconds. Oh, I never thought about this before. You guys that have felted along with me before, um, or if you've got some random white wool, you're welcome to put sheep in here as well. This could be like a sheepy landscape, a sheepy river. Oh, I like that with the small ones. The small ones, the, yes, yes, yes. And then one more big one down there to balance it out. I think that is my rocks. <laughs> Are we 
really wish I could figure out how to keep these comments for afterwards. Um, I, as you can tell, I also make sound effects, and I feel, especially if I'm doing it on my own and not just now I'm trying to think about what I say. But when it's just me, I completely make random noises, talk to myself. Yep, I am fully, fully behind you on that sentiment. Oh, I've forgotten my little water with these ones. And again, oh, I love the way the water just goes around and over. Now we're going to work up the way. We're going to put some little streams and you might even pop in some little dots little gray dots going up there but i'm gonna add the tv and now the further oh i forgot something important these are also rocks so we need to put along the edge we're gonna pop our little white bubbles again that's just gonna bridge the gap between the water and the rocks you can have you can pop in little just random bits so the faster moving the water you want it to be to look like not to actually be the more fast blah, 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 blah. So I'm just reading, reading comments and completely forgetting that I'm actually on stream just now. <laughs> I will start using those ones as well. I do anyway. Who am I kidding? Um, yeah. What was I saying? The faster you want it to appear the water is moving the more bubbles you put in like you know when you look at photographs that have the long exposure all the water is white that's kind of what i'm thinking here so this is kind of photography painty and if you put less white bubbles in the water will look like it's more slower like it's calmer so depending on what you want your water to be okay so we've gotten up to a point here, but it kind of just stops off. I might be about to sneeze. Um, so we need to pull that up and we're going to take just the white. And starting there, getting it going finer and finer. And then I'm going to hide it behind. So it goes behind this hill. So that hill is, so you can see the water is now, we're going to put some shadows in there to sort of pull it round, but you can see that little line of white has taken from that point just round, has made this hill suddenly be on the left hand side and like a feature. You can even, I'm tempted, I, I reserve the right to change this. have it going yes oh no I like that going up there and it's going as if the river's coming round you can't see this but I'm doing the arms above head woohoo excellent <laughs> yep I agree. It's the happy noise or the I have a very good grumbling noise when something's definitely not going right. There's definite grumbles. Okay. Right, let's get back on track. What are we doing? We're 40 minutes in. Perfect. It does not feel like 40 minutes. It's flown by. Okay, so we now need to do the last and final bit of blocking in before we're ready to do a good felt all over and then fill in anything that we want to fill in and change anything up. So we need to get 
some heather on because heather is is it the season i'm assuming it's the heather season just now and we're going to do something kind of similar with the heather that we've done with the rocks because i'm going to take a splotch of the darker heather now you can put as much or as little <laughs> as much or as little heather and now just making random noises i'm so sorry this is because everybody's encouraging me in the comments um a splotch of the darker purple and then putting on top of that a splotch of the lighter purple now don't worry if it's a mess because we are going to go over it and add more layers and depths and thicknesses and things and we also got to put shadows underneath them in the grass this around here is a little bit sparse I've missed bits there so I'm going to yes the stream the stream is my favorite I shouldn't say that because it's yeah but it is as soon as I put you like as soon as those rocks go in and that little bubbly bits So with this, I'm actually scrumfling the grass up to give it a bit of texture. And if you want to, ooh, we haven't done this yet. So we can grab a bit of both the greens and scrumfle them up together. And that gives quite a fun, not fun, useful sort of random random light dark differences am I making any sense just now <laughs> okay we're gonna do the same again for we're gonna pop in some more heather I just wanted to fill that bit in before I did too much more heather I might even whoop do the scrumful pre there we go and now we're just dotting it around at the moment but as I so the further back we go the <laughs> my words are failing me the lighter we want it to be if that makes sense so when it's like properly back there I'm actually just going to put little bits of the lighter purple on the hills just tiny see how tiny those bits are back there and you can be nice and random put a little I don't think I want a little bush by the water Somebody say something. That's better. And then do I want purple on that side or not? Mm, I think I'm going to put a little bit there, but I'm not going to... I reserve the right to change my mind. I'm going to pop in a little bit there. But again, you don't have to do it. You can... Maybe we'll have that going along the edge just there I like that yes I think I want a little bit more <laughs> thank you <laughs> a little bit more going around there I am trying to figure out a way that we can I can ping it so the comments that I'm seeing I can put onto the screen. Um, I have not done that yet but I am googling frantically uh, in all of the spare time that I have. Okay so my, I've blocked in the heather so everything now is blocked in. 
in 45 minutes we've got basically a nice fully blocked in picture and now the fun bit now the fettling when we're just going back in and adding bits taking away bits moving things around and so just now it's fluffy and slightly messy the more we felt onto it the more it'll all come together and it'll start to look like a solid like you can see the difference between this one here which is fluffy and then this one which I spent a bit more time felting over is sort of you can feel the difference I do want to leave these bits fluffy because that's also it gives it a nice bit of extra texture but I'm going to go over for a couple of minutes just stabbing everywhere oh that's something I've completely forgotten I'm terrible for doing this every so often you need to pull this thing off of the mat you can see it's all felting nicely through to the back and when you do this to begin with this pre-felt will stretch and will distort but you can just re-stretch it and re-put it into its right position into sort of the position that you want and now I'm my Yes, I was hoping, because I use a different program than StreamYards, because I know that StreamYards can pop it up like that. And I was hoping that this program that I use, because I'm used to it now, would also do it, but I haven't found a whoop. I haven't yet found a way. So I'm going to, I may have to bite the bullet and learn a new program. Or spend, spend more time googling and see if this because I really like this program uh, OBS Streamlabs is what I use it's brilliant but I do, <laughs> it would be nice to not not uh, look like I'm talking to myself <laughs> though I technically am <laughs> cow's ears are hard yes they are um, and I have no words of advice <laughs> advice but remember cows their ears are not going to be symmetrical every ear is different and yours might just have interesting ears we're not going to judge I approve I mean, my ears are excitable. Okay, so <laughs> oh dear. Um, so this back hill is a little bit plain there. I want to put in a little bit of texture, so I'm going to take some of a tiny, 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 tiny amount of the dark and lay that there. Tiny, 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 look how you can't even see it, but in person it does make a difference. Even a little bit of the greys. Oh, uh, sticking to my plaster. Sticking to my plaster. I don't normally wear a plaster, but I didn't think you guys would want to see. Uh, oh dodgy fingers I'm just going round so I'm starting to just fettle now so it's I'm less I'm going to talk less about what I'm doing ah no I'm not I'm still going to ramble nonsense um I can even put a little bit more of the there we go because that's just and if you think you've done too much on like if you put a dark colour in and it's too much you can either pull it off or you can add a light a little bit of light on top because the layering is what really makes needle felting come alive so I always like to rather than if it's just a little bit too dark I would much rather add some more light on top than take it off
because just now what we're doing is layering so we're in each section that we've got we've got sort of two main colors <laughs> no i didn't i didn't do anything to my fingers i'm allergic to the heat uh which is what's great because i live in scotland but it does give me a little bit of sort of eczema on my fingers um if it's hot so in the summer so, <laughs> so i can't believe i'm allergic to warm it's ridiculous so i've just <laughs> popped some plasters on <laughs> i did nothing exciting to my fingers i wish there was an exciting story <laughs> And a, a very, a very interesting, like a needle felting adventure. And I stabbed myself many times. No, I've not. Oh, oh, I was about to say it. I've not yet stabbed myself this time. I thought I was going to, but. Very true, Robin. I completely agree. Um, I'm going to read that out actually just for for afterwards when people can't see it but Robin has said because uh, we're talking about the animal ears that is it, is it Catty or Katie? Catty animal ear oh, I can't read animal ears can be difficult uh, even when making 3D ones We've got to figure out our own way of making them and being happy with them. We can get a bit too hard on ourselves. Very true. Don't be hard on yourself. And... <laughs> yep. Wait, do I have some wood? Yep, oh I have the dowel, right, I touched some wood. Fine. Yeah, we've got to always give yourself. Sounds like Katie. It is Katie, right? Uh, excellent. We've always got to be easy on ourselves. And mistakes happen, and sometimes, or most of the time, they can be happy. Like the, <laughs> the inspiration. Um. Bob Ross, happy little accidents. Okay, I don't know if you can see it as well on camera, but because I've added a few layers here, a few different colours, and I've felted it a little bit more, that hill is starting to look really nice and textured. So you can do it darker or lighter. I need to put a little bit more here, I think, because that's a bit too much of a solid line for me. So I'm going to fade that slightly with the, with the green and add a little bit of the green just to pull it together and I don't know if you get this shows on camera but a lot of the time what I'm doing is I'm popping it down and starting to stab it in but I'm also pulling it which is thinning it out a little bit which is quite a fun wee technique and it just sort of fades it, that's better. I can even, again, doing the light over dark over light over dark. Because, because. Oh, I like that. And accidentally, <laughs> I've had a happy little accident. Uh, this side, I've left slightly lighter at the top there than this side. So it looks like the light is hitting it hitting that side of the hill and I've got a little bit of shadow back there which handily enough is also where my shadow is for my rocks now normally I do tend to think about where the light is and stuff I didn't this time but I've clearly accidentally done it so I've put and you can do it as well so this side's got the lighter brown sludge as we call it on this side here and I've put a little bit more of the olive green and the darkest green on this side to give it that little bit of shadow and that's starting to look really nice I don't want to stop I'm, I know we're almost at the hour but I don't want to stop today um, 
So I'm going to work on this hill now here. And again, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of extra light just to the top bit there because I want to put in some highlights and that'll pull it slightly further away. And I'm going to put a little bit of the light green going round further up the stream there because again like I was saying earlier around the sort of edges of the stream is where you're going to get more vegetation you're going to get more bushes and things it's going to be slightly lusher so you want to so you generally see on like if the hill's slightly more barren even they'll you'll see the stream coming down and there'll be like little trees on either side and little and the stream's also worn slightly into the landscape because of erosion so that gives it that shadow there as well so it's a dual purpose i'm going to even pop little bits more heather just following that curve I gotta read this comment. Hold up. I don't, don't try and stab and read the comments at the same time. Do I like that? I think I like that. Now, you might not do this, but I want to. You can also. Let's see. No, that doesn't work. I was thinking I could maybe put a waterfall in, but I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, what's this going? Ah, yes. Mountains are the hardest bit. So hopefully there should be enough white fluffy stuff for you to <laughs> to add sheep <laughs> excellent okay where am I at what am I doing what day is this <laughs> the dowel is made of wood <laughs> okay concentrating concentrating we're doing this stop giggling this is starting to it's really just in this last sort of three or four minutes working on those hills again it's really come together okay and while i remember before i forget with the edges you have options you can either three options maybe more chop just take a pair of scissors and cut it up and then you'll get a straight edge you can leave it as it is with these lovely wispy bits along the edge. I really like doing that sometimes because I love being able to sort of see the process. Or you can fold it under, give yourself a nice straight or wonky edge and then <laughs> felt, just stab it so it Felts it through under the back. It looks really nice if you fold it under. This is, and you can, you can wiggle the edge a bit to sort of straighten it up and things. So that is a third option with the edge. Obviously, there's gaps here which I'm going to fill in at a later date. But okay, so. We are coming up to an hour now, so I am, and I am really quite happy with this, but we've got further instructions. So we've loosely felted all over. We've got everything in place. I'm really happy with the layout, the design. It's coming together. But now what I would advise you guys do is put it away for the night. You've done stabbing for an hour, good hour. Come back to it with fresh eyes in a day or two. And then for about 10 minutes or so, 
just stab all over, all over. Just keep going. Da -da 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 -da. I would tend to work from the top down and just going over it, over it, over it, stabbing it all in, locking it all into place, filling in any gaps that you can see. And that's when it's really all going to come together. And then you're ready to finish it. What other? What other? But just now we've got a sort of mostly finished. Really happy with it. I'm going to put some light green up there actually. I say, oh yeah, I'm going to finish and go away. No, I'm not. I'm going to play with it. <laughs> some light green there. But yeah. Yes, so flock. There's two different sheepy ones. Um, I've got Highland Flock, which is one of the ones that's in the round frame. And I've got, I think I called it more sheep. Some kind of sheep that I did. Was it last month we did the sheepy sheep? Where we've got fluffy sheep. Um, but yeah, to, the sheep are super, should we, put, should we put a sheep in? Let's do it. So grab a little bit of your white fluff. And I'm going to take a tiny bit. And if they're far away, make them nice and tiny with a tiny tiny bit of the black for their faces thank you i know we're technically finished but we're, we're going for extras and just because these are small and far away we don't need to put too much detail but you can just have a little tiny flock. Oh, that's so cute. Of sheep there. He's a little bit big. I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. And have him. Yeah, and you can pop little tiny bits. I don't know if these even need. The faces, but yeah. You can do that's better. And my my this was so I did one in the sheep in the sheep one. <laughs> you are a bad influence. And yes, this is DVD extras. In the sheep one, it was last month. I did one sheep and I put the black dot right in the centre, so he was looking at you, and looks a bit like a bit of frog spawn. So it is now the frog spawn sheep. Oh, that happened. So sometimes when you do a tiny bit, you poke it right the way through. So there we have frog spawn marked. Is this going to have to be a seam? Am I going to have to put a frog spawn sheep in every felting I do? It might be about to happen. Anyway, so you can put in a little flock of sheep there because they use just tiny, tiny left tiny tiny <laughs> you can tell it's past the hour and my brain has stopped <gasps> this sheep's got purple in it i think my parents are concerned now anyway right that's enough of this nonsense optional sheep <laughs> okay so congratulations you guys you have a semi-finished felt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a thing now. Uh, frog spawn Easter egg. Um, a semi finished Heather Hills landscape. I'm going to put more detail around the sort of purple. Again, adding layers. But I'm pretty happy with that. Just smooshing and adding, smooshing and adding. Well done, you guys. Uh, I would love to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have a flock of purple sheep. Um, I would love to see your finished ones. I have, there's a Facebook group. It should be linked below. Please post them there. If you have any questions, pop them there as well. I'm so proud of you. I'm sure yours looks amazing. I'm going to go before I cause <laughs> any more mischief tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you, if not before, the first Friday of next month. For frog spawn sheep apparently. <laughs>